Let us consider some uh, examples. Okay. We take uh, the collection of all uh, finite subsets of a given set X, and we will denote that by R sub F of X. F signifying for finite sets. Then uh, this collection is a ring on X. Well, uh, to see this, take note that uh, the empty set is finite. If I have a finite set A minus a finite set B, this is a subset of A. And uh, take note that a subset of a finite set is also finite, therefore A minus B is finite. And finally, the union of two finite sets is again a finite. So indeed, the collection of finite subsets of a given set is a ring on that set. And uh, this is precisely an algebra when x is finite, meaning x is in Rf of x when x is a finite set. So conversely, if x is infinite, then Rf of x is a ring, but not an algebra. So this means that uh, there are more uh, rings uh, than algebras. This makes sense because an algebra has an additional uh, condition that the whole set must be in the algebra. Next, uh, we modify this example uh, in the following. So instead of considering only finite sets or finite subsets, we also consider cofinite subsets. A set is said to be cofinite if the complement is a finite. So therefore, the complement of a finite set is cofinite and vice versa meaning the complement of a cofinite set is a finite set by definition. So F here denotes for finite and C denotes for cofinite. We claim that uh, this collection is an algebra on X. Well, to prove this claim, we go back uh, to this proposition. So we need to verify these uh, three properties. We need to show that the whole set is in the collection. It is closed under complementation and it is closed under uh, finite unions. Okay, for the first one, X is cofinite since if you take the complement, that's the empty set, and the empty set is finite. Therefore, X has a finite complement, or in other words, it is cofinite. Therefore, by definition of this collection, AFC, X must be an element of this collection. The closure under complementation follows immediately from the definition because the complement of a finite set is cofinite, and the complement of a cofinite set is a finite set. Finally, uh, to prove that uh, this collection is closed under uh, unions, let us take uh, two elements, A and B, in that collection. Here, we need to consider two cases. Case one, what if A and B are both finite? then it follows immediately that the union is finite. And from the definition of this collection, A union B must be in A sub F C of X. Okay. The case two is uh, the negation of case one. So meaning at least one of A or B is cofinite. So if A and B is in F of C, F sub F C of X, you have only two, option, two options. 
it's either a finite set or a cofinite set. So if both of them are not finite, then at least one is cofinite. And without loss of uh, generality, let's suppose that A is the cofinite set. Well, if B is the cofinite set, then you can just interchange the two and follow the same argument. So therefore, we can uh, assume without a loss of generality that A is the cofinite set. Okay. To see whether the union is in a D collection, let us look at the complement of the union. So the complement of the union is equal to the intersection of the complements by the Morgan's law. Okay. And since we know that uh, A is cofinite, the complement of A is a finite set. Therefore, this set, which is a subset of a finite set, means that the complement of the union is finite. Meaning, A union B is cofinite. Therefore, A union B is in the collection A sub FC of X. Since case two is the negation of case one, we have considered all possible cases. Therefore, we have verified A1, A2, and A3. And therefore, AF C of X is an algebra on X. Okay, it may happen that uh, a given collection of subsets is not necessarily a ring nor an algebra. So the question is, how can we generate a ring or an algebra given a collection that is not necessarily a ring, neither an algebra? Okay, so let us consider a collection of subsets of X. We define the ring generated by C, denoted by uh, this rho of C. So rho for the uh, Greek letter for R, okay? the first letter of the word ring. So the ring generated by C is the intersection of all rings that contains a C. So if you have a ring, you take, and it should be the other way around. So if you have a ring, and that contains C, you take all those possible rings, okay? And then you take the intersection of those rings that contain C, then uh, that would be the ring generated by C. So you could verify that this is indeed a ring, meaning it satisfies uh, the definitions or the properties of a ring. The empty set must be in this set. Yes, because the empty set belongs to every ring. Since every ring is closed in the close with respect to set difference as well as uh, unions, then the intersection of those rings is again. Uh, uh, follow, uh, satisfies uh, those uh, properties, meaning closure under set difference and set unions. In fact, one can uh, generalize this, okay? So the intersection, the arbitrary intersection of rings is also a ring. Furthermore, one can prove that the ring generated by C is indeed the smallest ring that contains C. Because here, you already uh, take uh, the intersection of all rings. This means that if I have a ring 
such that this contains C, then the ring must be larger than the ring generated by uh, C. Okay. So that's the ring generated by a collection. And in a similar way, we have the algebra generated by a collection. This is obtained by taking the intersection of all algebras that contains the collection C. One can also see that this is indeed an algebra. And in fact, it is the smallest algebra that contains C. Which means that if you have an algebra A that contains C, then this algebra must be larger than the algebra generated by the collection, alpha of C. So here is a diagram. So given, an, given a collection C of subsets, let's say of a set X, we can form the ring generated by C, and then we can form the algebra generated by C. The algebra generated by C is larger than the ring generated by C. Why is that? Take note that by definition, this is an algebra, and we know that an algebra is a ring. So therefore, this one is a ring that contains C. Okay. Since it is an algebra that contains C, it is also a ring that contains C. Since this is the smallest okay, ring that contains C, therefore rho of C must be a subset of alpha of C. Well, to explain in, in another way, as we have said as a while ago, there are more rings than algebras. Therefore, if you take the intersection of a larger collection of sets, there's a possibility that the intersection is smaller. So that's an alternative way of explaining why the uh, ring generated by a collection is smaller than uh, the ring, uh, the algebra generated by the same collection. So here, an arrow means that uh, the top is a larger set compared to the bottom. Okay. Let us look at this remark here. Okay, one can consider rho as a mapping from the power set of the power set of x. Okay, meaning this is the collection of all subsets of the power set. And it gives also a collection of subsets of the power set. So this row, if we plug in a collection of subsets and if the value is fixed, then this is the case if and only if R is a ring. So in other words, the fixed points of the mapping row, that is uh, the ring generated by a collection, are precisely uh, the rings uh, in X. The same remark applies for the uh, uh, algebra. So the fixed point, the fixed points of the mapping A, uh, alpha, I should say, are precisely the algebras on X. So you could say that the algebra generated by a set is itself, if and only if that collection is an algebra. And you can easily prove this uh, from uh, the definition.
So in the introduction, we are, or we were interested in uh, the problem, or we are interested in interchanging limits and integration. So we need to deal with a countable sequence of objects. So for now, we have not uh, considered accountable collections in the case of rings and algebras. Now, if we add the following condition, so suppose that I have a ring R on X, I take a sequence of sets in the ring, and if the union of this sequence belongs to the ring, then we call the ring a sigma ring. You can think of sigma as uh, for some, okay? Well, in the case of uh, sets, taking the sum or adding sets is something like taking the union, okay? So therefore, a sigma ring is a ring that is closed under countable unions. So there's uh, an additional uh, property. Okay. Now, if in addition, your sigma ring contains X, then we call that a sigma algebra. Okay. So the sigma here refers to uh, the property that it is closed under countable unions. Well, uh, in fact, a sigma ring is also closed under uh, countable intersections. The proof is uh, a bit uh, quite uh, tricky. So suppose we have a sequence of elements in the sigma ring R. Okay. To check or to see that the intersection of this uh, sequence belongs to the sigma ring, we have to apply the Morgan's law with an appropriate universal set. Here, we take the universal set to be A. And if you do that by the Morgan's law, the intersection is the complement of the union. But here, the complement is taken with respect to the set A, which is uh, the union of the sets in the sequence. Okay. We know that this is an element of R since R is a sigma ring by definition. So each of these sets here is in R. And if you check the operations that we have here, so we have set difference and a countable union. And by definition, we know that a sigma ring, which is also a ring, must be closed under set difference. And it must be also closed under countable unions. So therefore, this must be in the sigma ring R. So that proves that uh, a sigma ring is also closed under a countable intersection. Moreover, since a sigma algebra is also a sigma ring, then a sigma algebra is also closed under countable intersections. Following the notation and the definitions a while ago, we denote 
the sigma ring generated by a collection, which is not necessarily a sigma ring, by rho of c. So do not be confused. Here you have uh, rho for the ring. For the sigma ring, we have the variant of rho. Okay. They are the same uh, Greek letter, but this is the variant of rho. And in a similar way, we denote the sigma algebra generated by some collection C by sigma of C. And as before, the ring generated by a collection or the sigma ring generated by a collection is the collection itself. If uh, that collection is itself a sigma ring, and the sigma algebra generated by a collection is also itself if that collection is already a sigma algebra. So these are the fixed points of these mappings, var, rho, and sigma, similar to our discussion before. Okay, so we complete uh, the diagram. So given a collection, not necessarily a ring, we can create the ring generated by that collection. So by definition, that ring contains the collection C. We have already seen that uh, a ring is also an algebra, so therefore the, al uh, the algebra generated by C is larger than the ring generated by C. Take note that a sigma algebra is also an algebra because it is a sigma ring that contains uh, the whole set X. So meaning there are more uh, Algebras than sigma algebras. Okay. Well, uh, to give you an example of an algebra that is not a sigma algebra, you could look at. Okay. The uh, set of all finite subsets of uh, n as well as the set of co-finite set, subsets of them. So this is an algebra, but not a sigma algebra. So you could look at the lecture notes uh, to verify uh, this claim. So that is an example of an algebra that is not a sigma algebra. So therefore, there are more algebras, hence the intersection would be smaller. We know that a ring is a sigma ring, and one can show that uh, there are sigma rings that are not rings, hence there are more rings than sigma rings. And this implies that the ring generated by a collection must be smaller than the sigma ring generated by the same collection. And finally, since uh, sigma rings, or since sigma algebras are also sigma rings, then the generated, uh, the sigma algebra generated by C must be larger than the sigma ring generated by C because there are more sigma rings, hence the possibility of having a small, a smaller intersection. So this is to summarize the various uh, generated collections based on a given collection C. So you could generate the ring, the algebra, the sigma algebra, and then the sigma rings. So an arrow means that 
the one on the top is larger than the one at the bottom. Okay, so we know that a sigma algebra is a sigma ring that contains x. So one way to prove that a collection is a sigma algebra analogous to the case of algebras is uh, the following. So we need to verify three properties. The first two are the same uh, with the case of an algebra. And here, is the closure with respect to countable unions. Okay. Well, uh, this is enough because uh, from the first two conditions, this would imply that the complement of X, which is the empty set, must be in uh, the sigma algebra. So meaning X uh, complement is the empty set and this must be in a sigma, okay. So for a sigma algebra, we know that the null set now is in the uh, collection. And here, if you take, let's say A1 to be A, A2 to be B, and the rest A3, a4 and so on to be empty, this countable union reduces to A or to the union of the two sets, okay? So therefore we also get that uh, uh, S1 and S2 along with S3 impl uh, will imply that the collection sigma will be closed under uh, finite unions. Just by taking the rest, of the sets except for a finite number uh, to be empty. Okay, and you can prove uh, the other way around. So as an example, let us apply this proposition uh, to generate uh, sigma algebras from older ones. Okay. So suppose we have a sigma algebra sigma on X and I have a subset of X. Now we want to generate a sigma algebra based on sigma, but not on X, but on E. What we do here is we consider the collection uh, taken in the following way. So you take the intersection of E, the subset, and uh, an element of the sigma algebra. We will denote this by sigma sub E, and this is called the restriction sigma algebra on E. Take note that we have a sigma algebra on the subset and not on the whole set X. Okay, well, uh, to verify this, since X is in sigma, because sigma is a sigma algebra on X, then I can write E in this way. So E is the intersection of itself and with X. So X contains E, Therefore, the intersection of E and X must be E. And by definition of a sigma sub E, uh, this X here is in sigma, therefore this intersection must be in sigma sub E. Okay. Again, take note that you are an element of this collection if you can write it as an intersection of E with an element of sigma. Since E has been written as the intersection of E itself with this X, 
which is an element of sigma, because we have a sigma algebra on x, then by definition, it is in sigma of E. Now, let us check that uh, the collection is closed under complementation. Okay. So let us take a typical element of this collection, sigma sub E, meaning take an A and sigma and look at the complement. Okay. But be careful in this case, what do we mean by complement here with respect to what set? Okay, since we are verifying uh, that this collection is a sigma algebra on E, this complement must be taken relative to the set E. Okay. So the complement here, the complement of the intersection by uh, definition must be uh, the universal set that we are taking into account, that's E minus the uh, intersection. Okay. So if you look uh, in terms of Venn diagrams, uh, this set must be, let us zoom that in. This set is the shaded region here. So if you consider E as your universal set, if you want to take the complement of the intersection, which is this uh, red portion here, so the complement of this red portion relative to E must be the blue shaded region. And that is this uh, set. In fact, that is equal to E, intersection with the complement of E. Okay. Meaning, uh, look at A, and then you consider outside A, and then you take the common element with E, you end up with the shaded region once again. So therefore, E minus E intersection A is the same as E intersection of the complement of A with respect to X. Since E, since A is in sigma, the complement is also in sigma. Therefore, we have written the complement of the intersection, okay, as E intersection with an element of sigma, in, and uh, that is basically uh, the defining element of a sigma sub E here. So, in other words, you replace A by the complement of A. And this proves that uh, sigma sub e is closed under uh, complementation. Of course, taken with respect to the set e. And finally, to verify that the collection is closed under countable unions, we just apply uh, the distributive property. So we can pull this out side and we will get uh, that the union of the intersection of E and AN is basically E, the intersection of the union of the A sub Ms. Since uh, the sequence is a subset of the uh, sigma algebra and a sigma algebra is closed under countable unions, Therefore, this union must be in sigma. Hence, we have written this union of elements of sigma sub E 
as the intersection of E and an element of sigma. This means that uh, this right-hand side, and therefore the left-hand side, belongs to the collection sigma sub E. Proving that, uh, therefore, proving that sigma sub E is a sigma algebra on the set. And we call this, again, the restriction sigma algebra on E. So the process is basically taking the intersection of the elements of the sigma algebra on the larger set X with the smaller set E. As our uh, final example, we will uh, consider the so-called inverse image sigma algebras. Okay, so consider a function f from x to y and a collection t, which is a sigma algebra on y. So here we have a sigma algebra and the task is we want to create a sigma algebra on the domain from the sigma algebra t of the codomain. So the inverse image sigma algebra with respect to or generated by the function f and the sigma algebra t on y is nothing but the inverse image of the sigma algebra t. And this is defined to be the inverse image of the elements of the sigma algebra t. And in fact, this inverse image of T forms a sigma algebra on the domain. Uh, take note that here, F may not be invertible. By inverse image, we mean that, so the inverse image of a set B in Y is the set of all x in the domain for which the image under f must be in v, b. So if you look at this picture here, so we have a function f from x to y. Okay. How do we take uh, the inverse image of a given subset of y? So take a subset b of y, the inverse image would be the collection of all x to which this x is mapped to the set B. And if you collect that, for instance, if you collect all those elements in the domain, so for instance, if this is mapped to this one, then uh, the inverse image of B would be uh, this portion of the domain. So this is a way of constructing a sigma algebra on the domain from a function and from a sigma algebra on y. So if you have a sigma algebra on the codomain, you can generate a sigma algebra on the domain just by taking the inverse image of the elements of the algebra in the codomain. Well, to verify that this is indeed, this collection is indeed a sigma algebra on X, one can again apply this proposition here. You need to verify that the whole set is in uh, the collection it is closed under complementation and it is closed under the case of countable unions. Well, the proof is in fact straightforward. You just need 
to apply or recall the properties of inverse images. Okay. So for the first one, if you take the inverse image of the codomain Y, of course you get the domain X. And that would establish the first condition, S1. The second property follows from the fact that the complement of the inverse image is the same as the inverse image of the complement. Well, this is true, in fact, for any subset of the codomain. Whether it's in T, the sigma algebra on Y, or not, uh, this is uh, true. Of course, the complement here, one should be very careful uh, in taking complements. So the first complement here should be taken with respect to X, because here we have the uh, inverse image. You go back to the domain. But here, the second complement must be with respect to Y, because we are taking B as a subset of Y. Okay. So same notation, but uh, different context. Well, uh, if you are confused with that one, written in another way, this means that X minus F inverse of B is the same as F inverse of Y minus B. So if you do not like the complement on both sides, you could uh, do that. And last but not the least, to, ver uh, to verify that uh, it is closed under countable uh, unions, we have the following. In fact, there's a stronger result, which states that if I have an index collection of subsets of the codomain, so we have an index set I here, an arbitrary set it can be countable or uncountable. In either case, it follows that the inverse image of the arbitrary union is the same as the union of the inverse images. So by taking the index set I to be the set of natural numbers, and if you take, let's say, B sub I to B and T, then based on this equation here, you would get the closure with respect to countable unions. So this is, uh, in fact, uh, follows from the properties of inverse images. So to summarize, the inverse image of the sigma algebra of T, defined in this way, forms a sigma algebra on the domain. So this is a way on how to generate a sigma algebra on the domain. If you have a sigma algebra on the codomain and you have a map from X to Y.